Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I'm quite excited to be here. It's my first talk ever, so <laughs> in front of a quite large audience. So thanks for everybody for coming here. So today I want to talk to you about a project of mine which I called RIP for Rest in Peace. Of course it doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now it works. All right. So back in 2021, uh, there was a virtual golfer con happening and um, Robert Grismer and Jan Lenz Taylor um, presented a talk about generics, which was like the upcoming new feature coming in the next release. And um, they were like, generics are great, but please just don't use them everywhere. They are made for a spe specific use case. And it was still limited, I mean, it has limitation compared to maybe some other uh, generics implementation in other languages, but it's still the best implementation. Ian worked on six Im implementation so far, or maybe more even. Uh, so it's still the best that we could have for now. And so he gave us some advice. Oh, sorry, oh, do we have sound? Normally, let me check, but nope. Okay, let me, let's rewind. Anyway, let's check. Yeah, okay. No. Well, it doesn't work, but it's, not that important, I noted it just in case. Anyway, what he said in the end was like, please use, gener please use them wisely, talking about generics. And so, what do you do when an authority figure tells you what to do? Well, the total opposite, of course, because, you know, rage against the machine, I won't, tell, I won't do what you told me. And the CrowdStrike people, uh, which is a security company that I uh, use uh, Go quite a lot, they had this challenge. <laughs> Submit your worst implementation of generics in Go. <laughs> and um, so let me tell you, those security people are not to be trusted. <laughs> see you, I see you. And um, so we had a lot of fun and awful things like, um, we had a Perl style uh, lang format in Go. We had monads. My personal contribution was an async await in Go, because like Go routines are not that great. Uh, somebody else, I think, got like the medal and implemented a try catch blocks in Go. So so yeah, lots of fun. Um, but at the end, I also had something that I thought could be useful with generics, and this is what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so I won one of the plushies from CrowdStrike, um, and some other people would say, like, everybody got it. Just don't trust security people. That's it. Anyway, um, about me. So I'm Tanguy. I'm from France. And I've worked in IT for 16 years. I started my career in consulting for eight years, worked in various domains. Very interesting for me, because it was like so many different domains. Um, but that was before. Now, that's what, I, that's what I do. Oh, it doesn't work because I clicked the wrong button, of course. <laughs> so. As you can see from this video, uh, I'm a freelancer. I do anything for money. That was from this weekend, by the way. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, I need to click again. OK. No. Here. All right. Uh, so I'm a freelancer specialized in Go since uh, 2015. 
I mostly did like some RESTful API backends, some blockchain microservices. I've worked uh, in Dagger for one year, and uh, you should check them out. They do something quite amazing in CI CD space. And um, I'm also very interested in pushing Go in more areas. It's not just for DevOps and CLI and stuff like that. Like we had like an awesome um, talk today from uh, Andrew about Fine, and uh, there are video games, uh, game engine. So like uh, I think Go has a very bright future in those spaces as well. But let's get back to rest in peace. What is this code? Does any of you see what it is or have seen some kind of code like that? Nobody, nobody at all. All right, okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so normally it's kind of a classic um, HTTP handler function. And um, can I uh, maybe just... Okay, okay, all right, I'll do it. And um, so we have some JSON decoding on the top, then we have validation if we're that fancy, um, and then we finally call the backend call, and after that, we encode the response back to the client. But we, what's really interesting to us is really this, this line, the backend call. The rest is just like HTTP stuff, mostly. So not that interesting. Um, so let's add a new handler. Basically, we copy-paste nearly everything, and you can see with those uh, lines around here and here, that's the only thing we change because we have a new type that we handle in this, uh, in this call. So did you notice something between the first previous screen and, and now? Well, there is all of this, all of this that is crud, that is just repetition of HTTP boilerplate that we have to deal with all the time. And the first time you're like, oh, I have control of everything, it's fun, I see what, what's doing, but after a while it just gets boring, and also if you need to add specific error handling and stuff like that, you need to copy paste everywhere or like do some kind of, uh, uh, not advanced engineering, but advanced copy pasting everywhere. It's not that, not that great. Um, so we can have a solution which is we can abstract the handler and also some part of the backend stuff and use empty interface, which has its limitation as someone famously said, interface means nothing. It was Rob Pike in his Go proverb um, talk, which is also excellent source. And here, so we see um, we have the map string interface, we decode in it, then we send it in our backend function that is here, and that's it. And so we see the backend function as just empty interface here and empty interface out. So now we have like an abstract handler. We can reuse this one, but the problem is after that, when you handle your backend, well, you need to cast that, any interface back into map string interface. We could skip that one and just pass map string interface, but we still have this thing. This thing is very small here, but I'm gonna show you how it's ugly. <clears throat> so here we have the input converter, and now we have to take everything from the map, get the fields, check if they exist, otherwise we throw an error. Then we do the B, then we cast the value into a float, because we wanted not just like um, uh, the, the, the value as it was, then we need to uh, cast it back into int, because this is actually the value we want but we only had float 64 at that time. So yeah, it's a lot of crud, uh, craft, sorry, just for two parameters. So when you do that for one handler with one input and one output, 
it gets bigger. I, I hope your API has more than that. <laughs> so finally, we have um, in this, uh, sorry, in the previous slide, we have the real backend call in the end. And this will work with real types. So this is where you can have your domain logic use real types with the validation, the values, all the rules you want to apply on it. So of course this one is very simple. I mean, I hope it's just a simple example. If you have a backend that looks like that, maybe you have a niche. If you make money out of this, that's pretty cool. Just, just make them pay. So conclusion, a lot of runtime reflect boilerplate to get back to types, and, uh, but we have a potential reuse of the handler. I don't know if that's such a big win. In the end, maybe copy-pasting handlers is not so bad after all. If only we had a solution. Well, of course we have. We have generics now. I know we got like a lot of uh, bad reputation in the Go community for a while because it has limitations, it's true. And Go has been known for being readable and uh, maintainable. So what are the pros of generics? So we have better type safety. We have better performance than empty interface or any. In general, not in my use case, of course. Uh, there is a cool article from uh, Vicente Marti um, that talks about it. And the current Go implementation of the generics is really um, interesting when you have data structure, when you want generic data structure. For when you use that for behavior, which is what I'm using it for, it's less uh, performant. Uh, in general, you have more readable code in the user side. For, the, for example, we'll see the map package. And there is a lot of don't repeat yourself that you can avoid thanks to that. Don't repeat yourself is not always good, but in this case, I think it is. Um, who here knows about generics or have played with it? OK, I'd say like, well, maybe even a little bit more than a half. Um, so I'll go a little bit fast on this. So without generics, we use MathMin with those two, uh, with this um, uh, call. And th does it compile? No? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't because, yes, of course, you want to float uh, 64 value in the argument of math.min. So then you have to do this. I don't like it. I, I really, really don't like it personally. But we have generics now. Must be better, right? More readable? Uh, nah, maybe not. If we compare both, the generics library code is less readable. Clearly, the, the classic one is really, it, it just reads it. Like, what is CMP ordered? What are those variadic things? I, I don't know. It's a little bit weirder. But in the user code, though, it's nice. We can just do that. And it works. Actually, like the min function has been added uh, last, uh, last release. So it just works with an uh, integer with whatever types you want. So that is ordered. So now let's talk about rest in peace. Rest in peace is supposed to make most of the HTTP boilerplate disappear. So in the user code, you could, for example, create some kind of wrapper. Um, that is the uppercase uh, function up there. It has a context, it has an input, which is the name, it has an output, which is a string, and it returns an error, maybe. In this case, we just wrap strings to upper and we make the name uppercase. And when we want to register this handler, we just do it uh, like that, and it's easy. rip.handle, we pass the method, and then the, I mean, the, <laughs> the HTTP method and then the function. <clears throat> so basically now with that, I can wrap every request response 
type of API that is most of it. So I'm gonna make a demo. I should have like a nice QR code, but I like time to make it, so it's a, you will have to copy paste this link <laughs> if you wanna go. Um, all right, also for the demo, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna switch. Okay, um, so I have my server running on the port, oh man, sorry about that. So now if I just do a curl, that to localhost uppercase. I'm just going to send data which will be um, a JSON string. My God. Okay. And I need to pass it Content type. Okay, this really didn't work. Excellent, exactly what I wanted. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, let's check it out. Oh yeah, yeah, this error, of course. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> now it works. Okay. Uh, let's get back to the slide. God, I don't know where am I. Okay. Oh, uh, let me just uh, maybe show you the code, the full code, because it's quite uh, small. So yeah, I just have my uppercase function. I run my server. I just have this line, and automatically I get what, uh, what you saw. So now let's get back to this. The library code, uh, on the other hand, yeah, it's less readable. Uh, so we have an input output which can be of any type. We still have the context, which is the rest of the signature is the context, the input of this type, and an output that is of this type, and an error in case. And the rip.handle is just a handle that takes the input output, has the method string as a string, then we get this input output func that we pass to the thing, and automatically it handles like all the HTTP error codes and all of that. But I think that's fun, but I think we can go a little bit deeper, and this is the last part that I really worked more on it on. So rest, is pe rest in peace is about rest, and uh, a key concept of rest is the notion of resource. They are accessible, accessible with a URI. The action on the resource URI via HTTP method, pass, put, get, delete, and the current state sent back via HTTP response, the state of the resource. So I created um, a little tools that make, I mean, not a tool, but a, an interface that if you implement this interface, you pass it to handle resource, which is actually a handle entity, uh, sorry. And um, the user provider 
as long as it uh, respect this interface, handle resource and will entity would generate everything that it needs, the put, the post, the get, the delete, everything for free. So the interface is the create, we pass the entity, return the entity, possibly with the ID that has been set. Uh, we can get with the ID, we can update, and delete, and we can list all for now. I don't have like limitation, pagination, and stuff like that, but that would be part of a future enhancement. So, then, yeah, I don't know why it talked, because basically you get that, basically for free. And so you need to pass the entity and the entity pro provider before uh, the go 119 or 120. I had to pass both as um, uh, no one as a as a type parameters, but now the inference system improved, so you don't even have to do that. You can just like handle dot uh, rip dot handle entity. Um, we pass the URL path that is handled by the entity provider, which is here, and we can pass like a bunch of middlewares uh, to chain like a logging or something like that. So you get creation of CRUD HTTP endpoints, content negotiation for many encoding, JSON, XML, message pack, HTML, HTML forms, automated resource web pages that can edit the resource, and an harmonious way of handling common scenarios. I worked on a project that doesn't use this library. It's hell. So how to add a new encoding? So this is how I added the JSON encoder into, um, into Rest in Peace. That's, that's it, that's the whole package, the whole JSON encoding JSON package. So I have a wrapper that use, reuse the JSON new encoder, a wrap decoder, the new decoder, and then I register the codec. Maybe I will get out of the init at some point because that's a little bit dirty, but you know, move fast and break things. <laughs> so, RIP is to HTTP what an ORM is to SQL, basically. So, it's a little bit controversial to say that. Maybe now you're gonna all hate this project because I know some people have really a passion to hate on ORMs. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's uh, that's what I think it is. So now I'm gonna show the demo of the rest when we have a full um, entity providers. <coughs> God. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna. Uh, how much time? 26. Okay, we should be good. <coughs> of course. Okay. It doesn't work. It works. All right. <clears throat> so now. I don't need that anymore. So I just have my uh, handle entity call. I created a new user provider. And so let's go into that. So I just initiated, it's like a in-memory uh, user provider. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that works as well. <laughs> Um, all right, so I initiated with uh, one user just to have something not to do every time I test it. So I implement my create function. As you can see, it's with the, the real type. Return the real type as well. I generate the ID, just a random thousand. Save it in the in-memory map. I get it with uh, this. 
So here, this is a trick where I use um, the entity and not just the idea um, for some limitation, I think, in the generics implementation. So you still have to do some kind of thing like that to make it work. Then I convert into an int, then I save it, and that's it. Uh, no, I don't save it, I, I get it, sorry. Here I delete, again, like I just like convert uh, the, 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 the ID from the string. Then I do the update, then I list all. It's like 110 lines of code, and thanks to that, Okay, let's see, will my history help me? <laughs> no, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's gonna be a long time. Um, okay, so let's just do this for example. I'm gonna make you silent so we don't see all of that. All right, so we have uh, Jason. For those adventurers among you, we have XML, yeah? Yeah, you can have XML. And what's, what's worse than that is how about you wanna create an entity, let's call him Gaston. But, uh, oh, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so it's gonna be in JSON, God, sorry for lack of preparation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's do that. So I sent, I create my entity as JSON, but then it's gonna return me XML, but it doesn't return anything here because we're in a post, so, which is a problem. So I'm gonna do that and, uh, oh, I need the idea first. So I'm just gonna do that just for that. So the new ID is 143. So let's change 143, the ID here. And I actually need to put it both, otherwise it doesn't rag. Okay, after object key, yeah, great. Oh man. No. Oh, the, oh yeah, uh, which dub? Oh yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, God. Yeah, okay, should be good? Yes, it works. Okay, so you can do those kind of atrocious thing. Uh, I advise against it though. Um, but yeah, you can do that. You can mix and match uh, content type and uh, basically you have a, a content negotiation engine with that too. So now that I have this, I can delete, but maybe I will show you on the other way to deal with it, which is with this amazing UI. <laughs> I'm a back-end engineer, you know? Uh, so now we've added Gaston, so here it is. But I'm on brand, it's the, the original uh, Go brand colors, so that should be good, a plus one for me. So here I can uh, get to Gaston, and uh, let's uh, add a name, uh, Lagaffe. All right, now it's edited. I can go back to my list, and here we have a new one. I can actually edit in line, and uh, all right, like that. And maybe I will just want to delete Jean, and that's it. Uh, you can, and of course you can create a user, and. Uh, UI, UI is my specialty. <laughs> uh, Giovanni, all right, okay, and now we have Giovanni with uh, the rest of the others. Okay, so I used HTMX for that. I advise you to have a look at HTMX, it's pretty amazing. Um, and that's it, that's uh, my, my demo of this project. Oh. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks 
So for the future, I would like to access and update fields independently. Like for example, if a uh, username, if I could just put in the name, uh, so then I don't have to send the whole resource all the time. Um, I've seen this pattern and I quite like it instead of having patch, which is an undefined um, um, method in HTTP. So you could have whatever protocol in patch and dealing with diffs in JSON is not, I think, very great. Um, so, so I'd rather have that. I would love to have nested resource. Right now it's only top level resources. And I would love to do interlinks between resources. For example, like yeah, let's uh, users have a bunch of assets. I would like to link them from one to another. I would love to do ATOIs, which I don't know how to pronounce, and um, which is nearly the biggest thing about REST, but so many th so many people don't do it because it's a little bit complex. And basically, it would use links. API auto documentation, support for JSON LD to, to follow the links and create a whole, um, okay, <laughs> thanks, um, a whole uh, exploration of the API right from the server. No need for open API, Swagger, et cetera. And of course, I want to improve the API um, because it's still a little bit in a, a big work in progress. Uh, in the future, I would love to add protobuf encoding because they don't use, uh, they don't have a new encoder type. Uh, they only marshal and unmarshal with like the whole uh, bunch of bytes. So I would need to wrap an, a reader out of it. I would love to add um, the slug uh, logger interface so then we could use that directly in it. Um, I want to improve the error handling, so also you can have automated error handling with like error types, etc. And of course, you would need <laughs> customization of HTML templates because I'm not sure you would want to use the one that I created with love. And I talked with uh, Andrew from Fine, and I was even thinking maybe we could generate a GUI app for uh, the API and automate, uh, automate the connection between both with wh whichever protocol you, you want behind, which um, encoding you want. So based on all of this, um, I, I won't ask you to use it in production, <laughs> clearly not, but I would like some feedback from people who use uh, those kind of frameworks in other languages like Django REST API, um, I guess uh, Spring Boot and stuff like that, um, that could be very valuable to me because I didn't uh, work with them that much and I don't intend to. <laughs> and, um, but I want to avoid some pitfall they, they had. And of course, uh, all the discussion about the future of uh, this uh, project and uh, maybe some contribution, you know, like another encoding for 10 lines. That would be amazing. Uh, so I'm going to give thanks to the Go team for finally bringing the generics. Uh, my meetup in Strasbourg, because they had to view the first version of this talk, it was something. And Thierry Pfeiffer from uh, my meetup for the logo we created. And HTMX for the technology and for all the shit posting and memes on Twitter. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> also, thank all of you for coming. Thank you. Questions? Thanks, Angi. This is great. Uh, you mentioned that there's a performance penalty with generic sometimes as compared to map interface. Uh, when does it, ha does it happen and why does it happen? So um, I, I will share the, the slides so you will have the link to the Planet Scale uh, blog post about it. Basically, it's not in the range that bothers me. I'm doing Go, I'm not doing Rust, I'm not 
trying to squeeze every bit of performance, like a call to the, to the database will be longer. So that's why I don't really care about this. So that's why I continue this project. Um, but it's, I guess, again, like a database call will be bigger. So that's not so such a problem. But again, look, look at, the, um, at the blog post from Vicente Marti because it's really insightful and has like benchmarks and stuff. So. Kudos for HTMX, so good. And how far is this from being usable in production? <laughs> because I want it. Um, <clears throat> I really wish it were because I would use it right now on my current project. <laughs> But it's not, um, because the error handling is not there. You will need like a good error handling system. And uh, it might not be a lot of work to do it, but I like the time to actually sit down and think about it and do a good job about it. But um, the error handling, there is other stuff. Content negotiation, sometimes a little bit flaky. I need to add more tests to make sure I'm doing the right thing. But yeah. I, I don't know if it's so far away from being usable, but I, I just like the time to do it. I guess that's it for today. Thank you, Tongi, again. Thank you.